Hello, Saddleback friends. It's always good to be with you. If you're like me, you probably want to experience joy on a daily basis, but these are especially challenging times and maybe you're just not sure how to get there. I mean, what does that even mean, experience joy? It, it sounds pretty churchy. When I say I want to experience joy, I'm thinking of the feelings I have on those rare days when everything comes together just right. I mean, when all the universe seems lined up in a way that makes me feel like nothing could ever go wrong. The weather is a perfect 78 degrees, the sky is bright, but there's some awesome clouds. I've just picked some of Rick's gorgeous tomatoes out of our garden, and I've got some fresh mozzarella and basil from our herb garden to eat with a homemade crusty loaf of bread from my oven. My kids and my grandkids are coming over, splashing in the pool, meeting friends for dinner, my quiet time with Jesus was meaningful, and nothing tragic happens in the world for a few short hours. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? The way you feel on a perfect day is the way most of us want to feel every day. But we learn pretty quickly that perfect days are kind of random and rare, which can make joy feel random and rare too. So how can the Bible tell us then in Philippians 4.4 4, to be full of joy always? Well, I think we have to start with a definition of joy that isn't necessarily about happy feelings that come on perfect days. I've learned that joy is really about an assurance that God is in control of the details of our lives. It's about developing confidence that because He is in control, ultimately everything will be okay. And it's a moment-by-moment -moment deliberate decision to choose joy no matter what happens to me. The problem is, it's ridiculously easy to look for joy in all the wrong places. We all desperately want it, and we know that it's connected to God, but somehow we head off in the complete opposite direction in our search. Let's just talk for a few minutes about some of the typical ways we get sidetracked on our search to try and find joy. The first place most of us look is probably the one that trips us up the most every single day. We look to our relationships. Even though we know better, we expect the people around us to meet our needs, to take care of us, to understand us and appreciate us. We expect them to love us 100% right, 100% of the time. And when they don't or can't, we get mad or hurt or feel betrayed and abandoned. It's incredibly challenging to feel joyful when the people closest to us let us down or disappoint us especially if we're looking to them as the main source of our joy. I hate to tell you this, but people will fail you on a regular basis. Not because they're bad per se, but because they're simply unable to quench the insatiable thirst to be loved that resides in our souls. Another typical source of joy for most people is our possessions. I mean, our material belongings or lack of them have a way of shaping our joy. A new pair of shoes, a new computer game, a better car, better lawnmower, all have the power to improve our mood and our outlook. They don't call it retail therapy for nothing. For many of us, the place that we live is key to our sense of fulfillment and joy. Which side of town? Which side of the street? Which side of the tracks? What city? What state? What country? Who are our neighbors? What view do we have? What's the condition of our house? What our yard looks like? These are powerful drivers in our search for joy. Here's another typical search we go to for joy. And for many, this can make or break our level of contentment. What is your position at work? Where do you fit on the totem pole? Are you climbing up the ladder fast enough? Who's ahead of you? Who do you need to knock down so you can advance? And more importantly, that question, who's behind you? Who's sneaking up behind you waiting for the moment to knock you off your perch? The last common place we look to when we're seeking joy is our personalities. And you know, some of you have personalities with a capital P. You can fill a room with your energy, your vibrancy, your voice, your charisma. And those of us who are quieter, more introverted, less comfortable with attention, can feel like joy is just never gonna be ours because our personalities don't command it in the same way. But even the most bouncy, trouncy, tigger type person has down days sometimes. And relying on our natural personality just doesn't always take us where we need to go. Do you know what these five sources of joy have in common? They're all false. They are all fake. They all fail to deliver long term. 
They all disappoint and fail to satisfy the deepest longings for joy in our souls. People, possessions, places, positions, and personalities are just too flimsy to hold up the weight of our expectations and our desires to experience joy. In my daily Bible reading this week, I went through the book of Ecclesiastes, and I was struck again by the world's richest man, King Solomon, and the bleak conclusion he came to after seeking for joy and meaning through hard work, accumulating wealth, and many relationships. In Ecclesiastes 2, 9 to 11, it says, So I became greater than all who had lived in Jerusalem before me, and my wisdom never failed me. Anything I wanted, I would take. I denied myself no pleasure. I even found great pleasure in hard work, a reward for all my labors. But as I looked at everything I had worked so hard to accomplish, it was all so meaningless, like chasing the wind. There was nothing really worthwhile anywhere. The joy and deep sense of well-being, of, of rightness in ourselves and in the world, is not found in these externals, people, places, positions, possessions, or personalities, but it is found in a person. In fact, joy is our birthright from the Holy Spirit. It comes from being connected to God. Galatians 5.22 tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That verse doesn't say that joy is available for those whose natural personality lends itself easily to feelings of joy, or to those who work hard and meet their life goals, or to those who have conflict-free relationships, or to those who live in their dream house. No, it implies that it's available for everyone, for all who are in Christ Jesus, those whose lives are full of the Holy Spirit. So today, if you're feeling low, down, discouraged, Joy is a vague memory. The load you're carrying is just too heavy for your shoulders. Instead of calling a friend first, instead of eating an extra slice of pizza, instead of doing some online shopping, instead of working an extra hour at your job, instead of working out harder, start with reconnecting with God. Talk to Him. Remind yourself of the birthright already given to you. Joy is yours. Not happy, peppy feelings per se, but a settled sense of well-being and peace way down deep. He's got you. He's got the circumstances that are breaking your heart, keeping you up at night, eating at your stomach, making you snappy with family and friends. You can't fill your own empty well with relationships or stuff or a promotion. But God offers us himself as the true, unchanging source of joy. And God never changes. He hasn't changed. He remains constant, the same God he's always been. He was faithful before, he'll be faithful again. Everything around you may change, but he does not. He will be there when the person you love is gone. He will be there when the cherished possessions get lost. He will be there when the position is given to someone else. He will be there when the place you live is so unsatisfying. He will be there when you look within yourself and wish you were someone else. He will always be God. And as Psalm 1611 says, He will fill you with joy in His presence.